Okay, it's thundering, lightning, we're in an insane asylum. As a ghost, no less. Nothing spooky here. Oh, and there are demons everywhere. Did I mention there are demons everywhere? <laughs> I don't like these demons. They freak me out a little bit. Sixteen of twenty-five. I'm guessing I have to go through the wall here. Or teleport. Teleport it is. Alrighty then. Oh, there's the ghost wall. Okay. Now, where is Joy? She seems pretty close. Another one of these. Oop, one more and we'll have that one. Hey, Roman. Did you forget about me? Yeah, like I had a really easy walk. Why is there a hidey spot here? Just making sure. find joy and get her here what is that okay just real quick News article number five. In a Salem Police Department news briefing yesterday, department spokesperson Ingrid Larson confirmed that there has been no suspect arrested and that there are no le new leads in the case. While we urge the citizens of Salem to be calm and to carry on with their normal lives, said Detective Larson, we also encourage people to come forward with any evidence that may be helpful in this case. It is up to all of us to work together and keep our community safe. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is going to be the man in the box. Man in the box. All right, let's watch this. I've uh, I've had a long career working as a state inspector for the Department of Mental Health. During that time, I've been to a lot of institutions. And I have seen a lot of horrible things. But um, nothing even comes close to the evil events that I witnessed at Fairhaven Sanitarium, the place they now call Lux Eterna. I first arrived in um, 1926 to investigate claims of overcrowding and neglect. However, Fairhaven's reputation was tainted long before that. In 1911, Fairhaven opened its doors for the first time. A notoriously violent criminal by the name of Jack Yates was the hospital's first patient. He was to be the, uh, the, the shining example of the hospital's ability to cure the mentally deranged. 
However, when the superintendent's family was visiting one day, Yates broke free from his restraints and he, uh, he killed the man's wife. Since then, no one knows what happened to Yates or the superintendent. Well, that is, until now. Superintendent Wallace Halstead greeted me at the door. He seemed as empty and unkempt as the patients he lorded over. And uh, as I conducted my evaluation, I couldn't help but notice how nervous he got when I passed by a small broom closet. And naturally, I felt it necessary to find out why. When I opened the door, I was hit by the overpowering smell of human excrement. As the light flickered on overhead, I, I was horrified at what I saw. A withering man lay shackled to the floor in a pile of his own filth. Years of sunless existence had turned his skin, hair, and eyes milky white. He'd been chained there for so long that his, his skin had grown over the shackles. Um, it took me a moment to realize that the husk of a man was Jack Yates. The police arrived and Dr. Halstead was carted off. Doctors moved Yates from the small room for the first time in 15 years. The floor beneath him was permanently stained with the shape of his silhouette. They, they tried to remove the shackles from under his skin, but the shock of it all was too much for him. He, uh, he died the next day. I watched as they walled up his tiny prison, trying to pretend that it never happened. I honestly hope he's in a better place. Although the staff still claims to hear his agonizing wails coming from inside the walls. Some seriously twisted people in this game. Don't really want to possess her, thank you very much. We're kind of obvious. Nah, nobody knows. I mean, we're just talking here, right? There's more to it than that. You think we're invisible, but people can see things. Only if they're looking in your apartment window. So are we trying to escape with her, or what are we doing here? I guess I should just go find out, huh? Okay, so she's there. And I need to get these people to move. Okay, wasn't there something over here I could poltergeist? See what our comatose witness has to offer. Don't worry. 
you. I, I'm here to help you. I... Don't kill my sister. After all, Iris sees me. She's a medium, too. Okay. So, do I have to look at anything or just possess her? Okay, here we go. Oh, she pushed me right back what out. What the hell? She booted me out somehow. See if anything here can tell me what the hell is going on with this girl. Determine what Iris knows about the Bell Killer. So I'm guessing it's these paintings on the wall. Alright, therapy, flipped bed. Uh, I guess that's burned at the stake. And Bill. This relates to a Bell Killer murder where he burned someone at the stake. with these drawings. What is Iris trying to communicate with this drawing? Uh, I'm gonna say chaste. And I'm guessing tormented? Iris captured. Iris was captured by her assailant. That's only five of seven, really? Oh, why won't this door open? So... Oh, here it is. What is Iris trying to communicate with this drawing? Uh, two girls... Linked? Twins. Iris has a twin sister. Oh. Unless I'm missing something here. What are these things for? Like art therapy or something? Do no. Blue. Blue eyes. Cold as death. Who had blue eyes? And death? 
What does that mean? Blue eyes. Wolf eyes. Blue stare. Iris was deeply disturbed by someone with blue eyes. Okay, let's conclude this. Saved Iris's life, but paid with her own. Bell killer's going after young girls. But what was it? What, what'd you see? A poor kid. Her sister freed her when they were about to be scorched, but she couldn't return the favor. Leave us alone! She's coming with us. No, you're not taking her. You want the orderlies to shock her? She stays here. You want her to be safe outside? She comes with us. It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> I think we're going to end it there because I'm really freaked out now. Be back in a bit. <laughs>